All right. Hey, everyone. My name is Rob, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about collaborative structure-based drug design. Right now, we're live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, so make sure to come and check us out and learn a little bit more about what Nanom is about and how it's going to change the future of collaboration in molecular science. So to give some background on today's stream, we just released a new blog post called Collaborative Structure-Based Drug Design in Virtual Reality. It's up on Medium. Make sure to check it out. And this stream is designed to give a little bit more background and context to some of the points we made in that blog post. So as we said in the blog post, um, solving proteins is hard and that can kind of, that's exemplified in that a single change to the code of a protein, which is the chain of amino acids that actually makes up the molecule itself. Just one change to those uh, in that sequence of amino acids can have massive implications on a structural, functional, and even physiological scale. So we're going to talk about first the classic example of hemoglobin and sickle cell disease to illustrate this. So what I have here is normal hemoglobin um, deoxy deoxidized form and um, the oxidized form of healthy hemoglobin. So these two have the normal hemoglobin protein codes. Um, they look standard as someone familiar with hemoglobin might expect them to look. And these are what are predominant in your blood cells. So when you're breathing in, breathing out, changing carbon dioxide for oxygen, it's these forms of hemoglobin that are taking care of this process. But in some people, there's a mutation, specifically the, the glutamate 6 amino acid in healthy hemoglobin is switched out for a valine amino acid. And this mutation has pretty dire implications, uh, both structurally on a property scale and throughout your entire body uh, when this mutation occurs. And as most people watching have probably probably know, sickle cell disease is a, uh, is a serious illness around the world, especially in Africa. And um, this is the this is the biological fundamental basis of what happens with sickle cell disease. This valine amino acid that's switched into the chain for hemoglobin causes dramatic has a dramatic impact on the way these proteins bind to each other. And if you check out our collaboration with MOOF University, you'll be able to you'll learn a little bit more about why switching glutamate for valine has serious implications. But for now, you'll just have to take our word for it that switching out the glutamate for valine changes dramatically the function and structure of the protein. So what happens is that these hemoglobins start sticking to, sticking to each other, or as we scientists like to say, polymerizing. So as your hemoglobin molecules polymerize, they create these long, stiff fibers in your blood cells which eventually causes your blood cells to break, die, and that's where sickle cell anemia comes from, running, having low, low blood cell count. So um, it's an interesting example of how just one small property change, one, one byte of the DNA code being changed has a huge impact on the expression and the person who has to deal with uh, this disease. So now that we've talked a little bit about the significance of protein codes, understanding the way amino acids work, and developing an intuition for the way these things look on a nanoscale, let's uh, talk about a structure, a structure drug design example. All right, so I'm gonna bring bring these over here. So as you can see, we've got three fairly similar looking molecules, they're actually all glycoproteins from Ebola. So let's take a step back. Why are we talking about Ebola? Wasn't that, didn't that happen a few years ago? So one of the premises here at Nanome that we're trying to solve for in the future is that we have challenges that continually get harder in the drug design world. We have to 
combat super bugs that take out hundreds thousands of people and they get more complex as time goes on it seems so what we need to do understand better the mechanisms with which we get sick with wi and with which we can fight these super bugs so nano allows us to get a better picture of what happens here coming back to these molecules in front of us these are three different conformations of the glycoprotein from ebola in the center we have the original conformation it just looks like this um, and on these other molecules on the it, um, on the left, we have a glycoprotein, an ibuprofen molecule bound to it, and on the right, there's a cancer drug um, bound to it. So scientists at Oxford University found that this glycoprotein, which enables Ebola basically to infect human cells, it enables Ebola to bind with and then enter into human cells. These proteins are actually susceptible to binding with the molecule you might that is the active ingredient in Advil and another cancer drug and they have dramatic effects on the physical properties of uh, these glycoproteins so the point of this is that the scientists who discovered this at Oxford had no idea that these molecules would bind and have the effects that they do but as we can see, looking at the from here in nanom, it's a little bit clearer about where the protein, where these where these molecules fit, these drug molecules fit into the proteins, and why they fit there. They just kind of seem to work, as it were, when you look at them in virtual reality like this. So, our hope here at nanom is that in the future, just like mechanical engineers and structural engineers can collaborate on a car or a building and talk about the lows and highs of their design, troubleshoot together, brainstorm together, problem solve together. We hope that protein engineers, chemists, biologists can come together in nanom in the future and, and have a platform with which to look at their work together, to critically evaluate each other's performance, to look at the different proteins and brainstorm about what might fit in where. Because there's really more connect. There's more connection t between this scale, this this scale of these molecu molecular engineering things, and mechanical and structural engineering than we might think. There's this intuition that we can get when we are when we're familiar with how the thing looks, when we can hold it in our hands. It's just a different feeling than looking at these things on a flat screen. So, so we hope that someday chemists will be able to come together in nano and see. Oh. Of course, a of course, an ibuprofen or this cancer drug molecule would fit into this pocket. It's only logical based on the shape. And as people continue to develop and fight, develop solutions for and fight these powerful viruses with new drugs, we hope that Nanom can be a platform that will enable them to make these developments faster. If you're interested in learning more, make sure to hit us up on Facebook. Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, um, or check us out at our website, nanome.ai. And the platform is totally free for anyone who wants to use it. All you need is a VR headset and a VR-ready computer, and you can download our software for free and make an account for free. Um, that's about it for today. If you have any questions or things you'd like to see in future streams, drop us a line, and we'll be excited to talk about it in the future. Thank you.